All right, in this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at each of the types of CSS positioning, and we will start off with relative positioning. So back here in our code, we have a simple HTML page, and the only thing that this HTML page has is a single div tag. And we're gonna give this div tag an ID. So we're gonna say ID equals, I'm just gonna call it red box for now. And back here in my CSS, I'll create a new CSS rule for that ID. So I'm gonna say pound, red box, open and close the curly braces. And now all the CSS in here will only affect this specific div because of the red box ID. Now let's just give this some dimensions so we can see it. So I'm gonna say width is 400 pixels and we'll say height is 400 pixels. And I'm gonna give it a background dash color of red. So we'll save here and we'll jump back to our browser and refresh and we can see that div uh, lay it out there on the page. Now to illustrate how this relative positioning works in the real HTML and CSS, let's go ahead and move this div tag. So first thing is I need to assign it a position. So I'm going to say position relative and you're going to use positioning whenever you want to alter the default layout of a tag. So if a tag is here by default and I need to move it, then you need to use positioning. So let's say I want to move this tag over and down 200 pixels. So if I want to move it over, I'm going to use the keyword left because I want to move it from the left edge. It's always the offset. So if it's going to move right, it's going to move from its left edge. And remember the positive values push right. So I would say left and then a positive number. So let's say left 200 pixels. So I'll save here and come back and refresh. And you can see that does in fact push this div over 200 pixels. If I would have switched that and said negative 200 pixels, it would have pushed left and it's actually halfway off the screen and, and it would be invisible. So that cuts off the div because it's outside of the browser window. Now I'll switch that back to a positive number and whoops, positive number there and we'll, whoops, I guess I don't need even the value, just 200 pixels and save and refresh. Now, in order to move down, it's going to move from the top edge. And again, positive value would push down. So if I said top 200 pixels and save and refresh, you can see it moves down 200 pixels. And that's how relative positioning works. It's always positioned according to its natural position in the document, which normally would have been up here. So it's positioned according to itself and it does not remove itself from the document flow. Now to illustrate document flow and kind of what that means, let's add a couple more tags to our HTML. So I'm going to delete all this positioning and come back and refresh here. And we're gonna add in another div. So below this div, I'll say div ID equals, and I'll call this one blue box. And let's close off that div tag. And then let's add some CSS so we can see this div as well. So I'll come over here and I'll call this one pound blue box for the ID and it's basically going to have the same rules so I'll just copy and paste these inside of here except I want width to be maybe 600 pixels and let's say height is 200 pixels and of course we'll make it blue so let's save and refresh now this is just the default layout because divs are block level tags they occupy the entire horizontal line here so both of these are actually occupying this entire line and this entire line because of their block nature and let's see exactly what happens to the divs when I move div, the red div. So we'll come back in here and we'll reinstate that position of relative. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just say top 200 pixels and we'll say left 200 pixels. I'm going to save and refresh and you'll visually be able to see exactly what happens. So when I refresh here, notice that this blue div down here didn't in fact move. The red div just moved on top of it. In fact, I'm going to back each of these values off 100 pixels so you can still see the blue div down there. So the red div just moved over on top. And that's because when you use relative positioning, the item is not removed from the document flow. In other words, as far as the blue div is concerned down here, this blue box, it still thinks that the red box is right above it in this location. It's really not aware that it's actually moved down here. So that's kind of how document flow works. Now you'll compare and contrast that with our absolute positioning, 
which does remove the element from the document flow. And we'll look at that in the next video.